Purple Daily is Daily Vikings Entertainment. We just want the Vikings to win a Super Bowl before we die. I will ride with this group. Seriously, man. Please. And away we go. Yeah. Happy Thor's Day to all who celebrate. It's a it's a reckless speculation Thor's Day. Reckless speculation. <laughs> Thor Nystrom from Fantasy Pros and Betting Pros. And he joins us every Thursday to talk all things draft and Vikings. Uh, you, you you came down with a bug. We were going to get you on twice this week, but we, we'll make up for it. We'll, get, we'll have a two Thor week at some point. But welcome to the calm before the storm, the calm before the free agency storm, Thor. Yeah, it's good to be with you guys. I was intending to be here earlier this week, of course, but I, I came down with COVID. Um, but happy to be here now. We have a lot to discuss, so I'm excited to get into it. Draft fever, dude. Not COVID. It was draft. <laughs> it was JJ McCarthy. JJ McCarthy. I'm running draft a little hot. Fever. Yeah. You're you're like, I was so right. Threats. I was so right. I'm so on a mock. Mock. <laughs> Oh, he's got a he's got a draft fever, and the only thing that can cure it is JJ McCarthy with the number five pick after trading up and jumping the Giants. Well, okay, we'll get to the JJ McCarthy stuff because you were the first on it. Now, now everyone's like his draft stock is rising, and you've been saying the whole time. Well, no, a lot of people inside the game that have broken down. So we'll get to all that stuff. We'll get to a mock draft simulation. But what's your take on six years of Kirk Cousins and? It now feels very much like the betting markets now have the Falcons as the favorite, a heavy favorite in some of the sports books. We're to the point now of Kirkwatch 2024, Thor, where we have well-placed, well-connected listeners of the show sending us little anonymous nuggets via email the last 48 hours. One of them, and I believe this, speculating heavily that he was in Atlanta, Kirk, earlier this week. Florio was putting some of that stuff out there, too, on his end. But it looks like it might be Falcon. So what do you make of just the possibility of the end of the Kirk Cousins era coming here on Monday or Tuesday? I'm 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 excited about it. Uh, You know, great for Kirk. You know, we we tried it for six years. Uh, He was well compensated, as has been documented. We tried it. We paid him well. Uh, we got one playoff win out of it. The team, I think, was further along before he got here. I tried it, experimented with it. it it's time to move on. Uh, I wish him well in Atlanta. At the betting market, it looks like that's where it's going right now. He's going to have Bijan Robinson to work with there, if, if that's indeed what happens, and Kyle Pitts and Drake London and maybe even a first-round receiver. I hope it goes well for him. Kirk Cousins, we weren't going to win a Super Bowl with Kirk Cousins here. It, it's time to reconstitute this roster and try to build a roster that has a chance to win a Super Bowl. It's just time. Are we sleeping on the Washington Commanders here? I feel like they're uh, like on the periphery and they keep getting sort of mentioned, but then it's like, oh no, it's got to be the Falcons. It's got to be the Falcons. I wonder if we're sleeping on n- not a mystery team, but a team that's sort of out there and makes some sense too. I just... I, I'm not convinced that they are not involved here. Maybe it, it would surprise me just because of the, you know, obviously the the whole thing with the Washington thing beforehand. And then they have the number two pick and Kingsbury, to me, it would seem like his prerogative would want to be to work with the young quarterback. But to your point, I mean, they do have the cap room, obviously. They obviously have the quarterback needs. So, I mean, in, in terms of that, it, it would make sense on in those regards. But I would expect them to take the quarterback with that two pick. Well, the one thing that could be interesting, we were kind of talking about this off mic yesterday, is right now it's a two-team market. And and Kirk and Mike McCartney, his agent, they need a market so that they can get, I think it's length of contract more than its average annual value. I think that's kind of the sticking point right now, just educated guests, reading tea leaves and uh, poking around. But if the Vikings were to say at some point Friday or Saturday, with their social media team all ready to go, hey, you know what? We're going to bow out 48 hours before free agency starts. Instagram, Twitter, Vikings.com, ode to Kirk Cousins. Thank you for six years. We love you, Kirk. We wish you the best in your future ende- uh, endeavors. Well, that camp's going to have to find another team because the Falcons would then say, oh, funny, it's only us, huh? Well, maybe we'll just do one year. 
right? So that that's where like they probably do need a third team, at least for perception purposes, to come into the mix if the Vikings are not going to up their offer. We'll we'll see if that happens in the next seventy two hours or so. Yeah, it's sort of like Shark Tank when the second to the last shark <laughs> drops out, and then it's like just Kevin O'Leary, and he's like, "Oh, it's just me." So now my oh. my offer just ninety percent for five dollars. That's what yeah, I want. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So I I totally agree with you. You in any negotiation, you need leverage to get the best deal that you can. So it's sort of a delicate dance, and I agree with all the reports out there that you know the you know it, it seems like it's been this way from the jump that the Vikings have sort of set their offer. And Kirk, if you can get something better out there, you can go ahead and take it. That That's not the best leverage. And if there's not another team out there besides the Falcons that's giving an offer, you sort of have that, that tenuous uh, leverage. And, and it seems like they're, you know, they're heading towards this breakup, whatever. It's a, it's a very delicate dance, like you're saying. Um, I don't know the, the offer that the Falcons have out there, whatever, but if that's a firm offer, maybe maybe it, that's just what it is. We're in a weird period where it's like that, the pre-tampering period, whatever. So, yeah. you know, we, we just don't know. So what if the Vikings do go bridge-wise, uh, uh, Thorsky, with uh, Sam Darnold, Thorsky. And, and, and let's say they bring in, you know, the, they draft a, a QB, but let's say Darnold is signed next week. What what's your assessment of him now? Like, and I'm I'm not he could get beaten out in training camp. But what's your assessment? Uh, how far has it come from the draft when he was what a top three pick to now where he's bounced around? Kyle Shanahan clearly saw something because he he, he brought him in not to start. But where do you think he would be now as a potential bridge guy if if they draft McCarthy and let's say don't start McCarthy week one? He well, we know he's got a good arm. Uh, we know that that people like him and he's easy to work with, and we know that he's worked with McCown before. Would I trust him or or believe that he has viability to win games? No, uh, not at all. But you know, in terms of like a fit along with a guy that you would draft in the top ten. You know, because I, I think the Vikings are going to have to move up to get one of those top four guys. Yep. But as far as pairing him with that guy, yes, for, for next year. Because if, if if that's the direction the Vikings are going, I don't think the Vikings, and I think you guys would probably agree with this, are going to be a playoff contender next year or, you know, are, are going to be going far in the playoffs next year. You're probably going to have to use next year as sort of your punt year because you're going to take the dead uh, cap hit of the Cousins, you know, contract, whatever that thing's going to accelerate. You're going to have to swallow – the pill of, of some of the, the, you know, you're going to have to slough off some of those dead cap hit next year, the, the rookie quarterback, everything like that. But you could have uh Darnold as that sort of be the, the caretaker guy uh, learning the ropes, the, the guy that knows McCown's system, everything like that. I think he would be good as far as that goes. And you don't have to give him that much money. Those would be the positives right. of mm -hmm. Sam Darnold. Right. I do have, I actually have two updates. Uh, just one of them is hot off the press. One of them is from earlier today as it pertains to Kirk Watch like 2024. Like Panda Watch. Panda Watch 2024. You like that. You like that. So uh, Russell Wilson is reportedly going to meet with the Steelers. Now he can, I believe he can sign before the league year because he was released, right? So the Steelers and Russell Wilson, in terms of the musical chairs game here of, Teams that need quarterbacks, quarterbacks that could come in and replace Kirk. Like if those two teams get married, then take them off the board. But this is another interesting, cryptic, vague thing that came across Twitter late last night. ESPN's Lewis Riddick, a former Atlanta Falcon, two times over in the 1990s, he tweeted a gif of Kirko Chains dancing on the plane from last year with no other context. Now, Lewis Riddick's a pretty straight-laced guy, super plugged into the league, right? He's been an executive, ESPN, getting a little squirrely. I don't know if he had a cocktail last night or what, but getting a little squirrely on Loosen Twitter, up. putting the gif out. <laughs> Is he messing with people? Does he know something from his Atlanta connections? I don't know. But there's your update. You like Kirk that? Watch you like that? 2024. <laughs> Yeah, he's also been, uh, Louis Riddick has also been uh, sending out a lot of pro J.J. McCarthy uh, tweets and and slapping down a lot of the J.J. McCarthy haters. So I, I appreciate that. Out of well, Lewis Riddick let, let's, as well. let's get to that. So Destin Adams had the tweet of the day yesterday in terms of just J.J. McCarthy Viking steam. Destin Adams from A to Z Sports, which is a, a great digital content platform. 
And he said, I've been told by multiple people I trust around the league that teams interested in trading up for J.J. McCarthy are operating with the thought that they have to jump the Vikings. Interesting. I mean, you're the first one that came out and, and floated, oh, he might be a top 10 pick. Actually, I take that back. Jim Harbaugh was the first one to float. <laughs> He's the best quarterback in the draft. And then Thor came along and said, we're not talking second round here. We're talking legitimate top 10 pick. And now the rest of the world is looking at the Vikings and JJ and like, wow, we might have to jump up to six or five to make it a sure wow. thing. What do you make about the the JJ stock rising in air quotes? Yeah, I mean, it's it seems like everyone's saying that now, right? Like uh, Ian Rappaport reported the same thing during the combine. Peter Schrager reported the same thing. Daniel Jeremiah was indicating the same thing. Bucky Brooks. I mean, you sort of go, go down the line. That, that was, you know, everything you were hearing there. J.J. McCarthy had a great combine. And I think that's where a part of it uh, was coming from. But a part of it was just what people were hearing at the combine. I mean, even, you know, before and around his his workout, it it wasn't all coming from what they were seeing on the field. I, I think it was the first opportunity for some of these reporters to talk directly to their league sources uh, about J.J. McCarthy. And, and I think uh, Ben Solak had, uh, uh, he put something out for the ringer where he said he was surprised that when he was talking to the uh, his league sources, that they were talking a lot more about J.J. McCarthy than they were Jaden Daniels. And I think the sentence he had in his thing was, don't be surprised if J.J. McCarthy goes ahead of Jaden Daniels. So so you're hearing a lot of different stuff like that. Um, you know, and the story sort of coming out of the combine was J.J. McCarthy was a riser because of his combine. I wouldn't conflate, you know, or or have the causation be that. I, I think the league, you know, and I, we talked about this a month ago. Yes. I think the league was was already way higher on J.J. McCarthy, certainly than the public was. I think the combine was the platform for the public to see what the league already knew about J.J. McCarthy. You got to see the arm strength of J.J. McCarthy and, and glimpses of the athleticism. J.J. McCarthy goes there. He weighs in 15 pounds heavier than he was listed at Michigan. Then he goes and runs the Put fifth off. fastest three cone of the entire event, including cornerbacks, including wide receivers, at 15 pounds heavier than anyone thought he was going to weigh in at. Then he goes and th so the record for velocity at the event that you know that that they have uh, you know uh, uh, judged or whatever was 62 miles per hour uh, previous to this. Joe Milton matched it when he went out there through 62 miles per hour. JJ McCarthy th threw 61 miles per hour. That's even before you start talking about his throwing session, which was fabulous. People were putting out on Twitter, mostly Ohio State Twitter. There was one throw where the receiver ran the wrong route. You to the left. See. Was it to the left? Yeah. Th they were pointing at the cone because the receiver was supposed to run around this cone and he ran the wrong way, whatever. So McCarthy had this, this one bad throw because the receiver ran the wrong thing outside of that he was throwing dimes i mean uh if you count the amount of times where where daniel jeremiah was like that's perfect that's perfect that's perfect you could have had like a ringer on 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 the thing whatever <laughs> it, he, he has this great throwing session but just by the quantifiable metrics jj mccarthy was great but again the the stuff coming out of there i think that was even you know irrespective of the performance that jj mccarthy put there i, I just think the nfl is yeah. really high on the kid so Thor, give me the the uh, rankings in your mind internally with the league right now on the big four. So the four QBs, which clearly going into to the combine or a month back went Caleb Williams, probably Drake May, Jaden Daniels, and I think it was a big three at that point. That's that's how it was perceived by the public. It's now a big four. How do you think that the league ranks them now? I think if you looked at the the boards around the league, I think Caleb Williams is going to be one on on most. Uh, I think after that, it, it starts to jumble. Uh, I I think you know depending on the board you looked at, I think some would have Jaden Daniels too. I think Drake May would be two on some, maybe McCarthy on a couple. I think McCarthy would be three on a lot more uh, than people would think. Um, you know, and, and I, I think there's going to be some teams that are a little bit lower on May. There's going to be some teams that are a little bit lower on Daniels, depending on their scheme fit. And then of course, there's going to be some teams as well that have McCarthy QB four, but I think the two through four, that's more, uh, you know, depending on the, the way that their evaluators view those guys. 
and the way that the offensive coaches, the scheme, the scheme fit, because those three guys are so different. But yeah, I, I think that that's where you get the discrepancies and that's where we could start to have some fun once the bell opens on that last Thursday night in April. And, and we might not know until we get there. We know what the first pick is going to be, but it, we might get some fun starting with that second pick with Washington. I mean, it's so interesting too, because if you're the Vikings and you like J.J. McCarthy, you have to figure out where's the safe spot where we know we're going to get him. But but without moving up too high necessarily, right? But the, the problem is, as of right now, the first three teams in the draft all need quarterbacks. Now, there's some there's a lot more chatter now about New England maybe just needing to build out their roster and maybe they move back. Maybe they bring in Jacoby Brissett and go get Penix later, pick up an extra first-round pick by moving back. So I could see that. The Giants, out of the combine, there's all sorts of steam that they're just... Rich Eisen went on his show and said... One of the rumors I heard was that they're just done with Daniel Jones, like no eye contact with Daniel Jones. So they're looking for a quarterback in the draft. Now, if Kirk goes to Atlanta, that's a checkbox in favor of the Vikings, right? You take a team, a quarterback needy team off the board in front of them. But where's the safe? If the Vikings want, let's say there's a big four and they like McCarthy. Where do you have to move up to to make sure that you get J.J. McCarthy? Unfortunately, I think it's five. And I say unfortunately because of what the price point is, but yeah. I, I buy the thing of the giant smoke. That would scare me uh, because if I was the Giants, that's how I would see it too. I, I would want to move on from Daniel Jones. You, I mean, you're not certainly, it, it, that's not a fixed outcome. You know, I, I don't think that's 100% going into the draft. If one of those top four guys is available at six, it's a 100% chance. But if you're the Vikings and you, you know, let, let's say the Kirk Cousins indeed does sign with Atlanta. Now you're going into the draft. You can't assume, oh, well, if we get, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, Kirk is signed with Atlanta. Uh, maybe if we just trade with Tennessee, you know, then, you know, at at, at seven, we'll be able to get uh, the quarterback, whatever. Uh, or it, Atlanta in that case, whatever, because yeah. he's going to get past New York, uh, the, the Giants. I don't think you can assume that. It's, it's just one of those things that would be up in the air. So I, I think the, you know, the only way that you would feel really, really good is getting up with the Chargers. But the cost of that, it's probably going to cost you your first round pick next year. I, like, right. I, and, and that's where it hurts. That's why, you know, I mean, some Vikings fans are vehemently opposed to this, but that's why I wanted to lose one or two more games last season. Yeah, you damn, damn you, Josh Dobbs, for coming in. Six. That's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you wouldn't have had to give up your first round pick next year if you'd done that. And the, the scary thing, too, is, is this, though. If you make a trade to, to get up to five, which I agree right now, as the board falls, I think you, you can get McCarthy at five. What scares me, though, because I think if Daniel Jones starts in 2024 for the Giants, I think there's a fighting chance he gets Brian Dable fired. So, like, if I'm the Giants, I'm all in on we got to make a change here. My fear is that the Giants, who are conveniently at six, if I'm not mistaken, then go to the Patriots and get to three. And now, but now you might have a quarterback drop to you. It might not be McCarthy. So yeah, this is it. When the tweet that Phil just read came out or the thing on X about teams that have to jump the Vikings. I don't think that's the, the, the story at all here. I think it's who do the Vikings have to jump? Cause if you stay at 11, I don't think there's any way with what's transpiring right now, J.J. McCarthy is still there. Oh, I, I totally agree with you, John. Yeah, I, I think we're past that. Um, and, and yeah, I, I think it's um, that that's just my situational assumption as well, is that you're going to have to move up to get one of those four guys. So, yeah, it, it's sort of a race up there. And I also agree with sort of what you're insinuating there about, you know, if you trade it up to five right now, you, you wouldn't even be convinced that one of the, uh, you would like to think that one of the four guys would be there if you traded for that fifth pick today, but you couldn't even be a hundred percent convinced of that because it could go one, two, three, four. So if you're going to trade for the fifth pick, that would be one of those things that I'd want to do it while they're on the clock with yeah. one of those, you know, guys sitting there and Good point. everybody knows that I love JJ McCarthy, but it's not like I got tunnel vision on this. If, if I'm the Vikings, any of the four guys will do, you know, I mean, like any of those four guys, th those guys would all be values there. They're all guys that I would hitch my wagons to going forward. If, if Jaden Daniels is the guy that's there, if Drake May is the guy that's there, 
any of those guys, I would absolutely take, um, give them the rookie contract. Now the cap situation after next, you're going to have to take the, the Kirk dead cap hit this year, swallow the pill on that. But the cap situation after this coming season, all of a sudden you are clean as a daisy. And now you have this war chest of cap room. You have your rookie uh, quarterback there. He is set. Hopefully Justin Jefferson now is set and happy on his long-term deal. Darisaw, yeah. Darisaw is on his long-term deal. Now you have this war chest of cap room to go out and just fire away to get defenders around, you know, Ivan Pace and, and the couple of defenders that you have that are already your building blocks. Now you can build up that defense. And this is how we build a Super Bowl contender, hopefully. Hey, what if, okay, let's say that the top of the draft just goes horribly for the Vikings. The top three teams all want to stand pat. They don't want to trade, and they just want to draft their franchise quarterback. And then the Giants move up to four with Arizona. Because I could see that happening, too. Like, Chicago, Washington, New England all take quarterbacks closed for business. And then Arizona's like, well, hell, we'll take. We'll take either. We'll take Roma Dunze or Marvin Harrison Jr. It doesn't matter to us if we can get an extra second-round pick or something. Giants move up to four grab J.J. McCarthy, and then it goes Chargers, Cardinals take receivers or or weapons, right? And now what do you, if you're the Vikings, like what do you, so at that point, what are your thoughts on how Michael Penix and Bo Nix coming out of the combine look? Well, I, I definitely like Penix more. Um, I just don't love his fit in KOC's offense uh, because he doesn't throw well when he's moving. He has to be, he has to have his platform under him. So when he moves whatsoever, you can basically think about, you know, every inch his, his feet move off of his spot, his yeah. accuracy depreciates more and more and more. Uh, and he doesn't throw over the middle. So he's not, he's not going to be good with those layering concepts that KOC likes as well. Mm. You know, when, when you're looking at that. So KOC, I, I, maybe I should put this another way. KOC would have to modify his offense and, and the scheme that he has in order to facilitate Michael Penix's game. If KOC feels that, you know, that he could do that in an effective way, sure, then then maybe you could consider that. I don't like Bonex. Bonex, if, if he was available like late in the third round, mid to late third round, then maybe in, in that scenario. Michael Penix, I do think, is worth a second round pick, especially that we got the report from Indianapolis that the medicals came back clean on him. He's got the arm talent. It's just, as far as the schematic fit for what KOC does, I, I don't love the fit. But, you know, again, if KOC would make some of those adjustments, then I could see it a little bit more, I, I guess. But I, I wouldn't take Knicks. Uh, Vikings fans aren't going to love this, but this is what I would do in that scenario. I'd punt next year. I, I would sign a bridge guy. I would trade down. I would try to get a first round pick. Next Load your year. roster. Yeah, exactly. I, I, I would take next. I, I would take my pill next year. Uh, sign some, you know, a bridge type guy, uh, uninspiring dude. Uh, and then, you know, I'm not giving out a second year on any contract and I'm just signing upside guys. And then I'm, I'm drafting upside guys. We're clearing the books. We're going to, we're going to have even more cap room going forward. And then I would try to trade for a whole bunch of picks next year in terms of trading down. And then I want to put myself in a situation where I have a high pick the next year um, and multiple first round picks. And then I'm going to try to put myself in a situation where I can give my franchise quarterback the next draft. The wills just puked. <laughs> they wouldn't that's the do problem. that. But that's what I, I love want. the, I love the idea, yeah. but I also like the thought of to, to go back to your point this past season. I love the thought of, Oh, Kirk cousins got hurt. Trade deadlines right here. Let's trade Hunter. Let's not be concerned about it because you'd be sitting, to your point, you'd be sitting pretty right now. And you guys know I was screaming for that during the fall. I, you know, I mean, like, well, I was screaming for it starting the 0 and 3 start, whatever. I 100%. wanted to trade Cousins then. I wanted to trade Hunter then. I wanted to trade anything that wasn't nailed down. I want, I mean, so, anyone give us a seventh for KJ? Like anything that wasn't nailed down. Yeah. Uh, and then especially when uh, Kirk went down, I didn't know. I, I know that the Vikings didn't really give up anything for Dobbs, but I, and, and and people can go back on my Twitter and look at this. This is this is not me saying this in hindsight. I was tweeting immediately. Put in Jaron Hall. This is where you recoup the fifth round pick that you spent on Jaron Hall by putting <laughs> him in right now and tanking this thing to the end and then <laughs> trying to move all the way up to the top of that draft board so that we can get one of these top guys, these top quarterbacks. 
Yeah. Well, okay. Speaking of draft board, let's do our mock draft yes. simulation that we do I every week mock. with Thor. Mock. All right. And I'm going to give you guys a couple specific parameters. Thor is going to be our GM, and then we can just be like the the interns or the low level scouts that just throw dumb ideas out. Presented by our new friends at Nicolay Law. Welcome aboard, Nicolay Law, to Purple Daily. Definitely. The exclusive personal injury law firm of Purple Daily. Now, Nicolay knows, by the way, local, and maybe you've seen a billboard or two around town, Nicolay Law. I don't know. You open your eyes, you probably see one. There he is. Um, Real Nicolay Law knows that when you or loved one get uh, gets hurt, ordinary life can come to a stop. Things get complicated. The insurance companies are likely to pressure you because they don't really care if you get better. You know, they're just going to bother you. But Nicolay Law cares. And they've seen every play the insurance companies have. They'll go the whole nine yards to make sure that you get the compensation you deserve after an accident. Start your path to winning at NicolayLaw.com or give them a call at one 855 Nicolay. Also, boys, a shout out to our friends at Federated Mutual Insurance Company as a business owner. And there are many of you that consume this podcast and our business owners. You understand the importance of protecting your reputation, the workplace, employees, financial assets. And the team at Federated is ready to help your team by creating a custom lineup of industry specific coverages and risk management services to help you stay on top of your game. Contact your local Federated rep for more information today. And remember, at Federated Insurance and FederatedInsurance.com, it's our business to protect yours. I want to mock. Mock! Gentlemen, here are the parameters. Kirk Cousins has signed with the Falcons, we will say. Daniil Hunter has signed with whoever, five seconds into free agency for a bag. Bears, Jaguars, whatever. All right. So the Vikings have... The 11th overall pick, they've got the 42, but they also have, let's do this for just a second. They've got $32 million in effective cap space for this year. Maybe more importantly, they have $121 million in effective cap space for next year. And that's before parting ways with Harrison Smith, potentially. So they could actually sign upside free agents that are in their mid to not quite late 20s. Christian Wilkins, for instance. And you could go big signing bonus push money into 2025, 26. So before we even do the mock draft, I think we extend Justin Jefferson for sure. I think we bring Christian Wilkins back home with Brian Flores. Ooh. PFF projects $25 yeah. million a year, but if Hunter walks and, and cousins walks, don't you go to Christian Wilkins and say, well, we got a bunch of money to spend the next two or three years. Do you want some of it? Interior set, then. You're in sure. great shape. Bring him in. That was easy. Look at that. We just got Christian Wilkins. Welcome yep. to the Minnesota Vikings, Christian we just, Wilkins. We just told the, the rest of the team's pursuing him. <laughs> Buzz off. We're signing you. Is that realistic, though? Like, do you guys think Christian Wilkins? I mean, he played. Flores had him in Miami when they drafted him. It's a system fit. Yeah. He's 28. He's younger than Daniil Hunter. He had 60 pressures, doubled his pressure rate last year. Am I... Am I getting too excited about Christian Wilkins? It's the thing we need the most outside of quarterback. And the thing that makes it more realistic for me, I mean, outside of the, the biggest neat thing, it's the Flores fit. I, I think that kid likes playing in Flores' system. Flores would obviously be um, you know, interested in a reunion there. So, um, you know, if they can make the financials work and the Cousins leaving and Hunter leaving uh, would certainly help facilitate that. So I, I could see a possibility of that. Okay. And, it, and it changes – your defense instantly because you've lacked that that player since well Dalvin Tomlinson partially filled that in his prime Linval Joseph did yeah. but like I mean this gives you a presence now right in the middle of the line I love this idea let's do it yeah so and it, do it. It, it sucked not having the good interior guys I mean like you're bringing up some of them but like our whole lives like uh the Williams wall 100%. John Randall Chris Hovan like yes dude. I mean these yes. past couple of years it's it's yeah it, it hasn't felt the same yep. and so we've done that and there'd be some other free agent signings too but that's that would be the biggest one that that we do here uh as the Vikings front office and it would affect how we operate in the draft too so I wanted to just get that piece out first but if you guys are ready, and we got 10, 15 minutes left here with Thor, so we'll do a five-round mock. And I think I, I think I set this as a five-round. Yep, five-round mock. We'll start the clock. Let's. Should we just see how the first pick or two plays out and then just see? Is yeah. that fair? Okay. Because we might have to trade up. 
has PFF updated their algorithm? Oh my, Drake oh, May number whoa. one to the Bears. Wow. Drake May number one to the whoa. Bears. Let's go. What happened there? Interesting. Anything can happen. You never know. Okay. All yeah. right. Okay, Commanders. Caleb. At number two, they take Caleb Williams. Patriots on the clock at three. Thor, should we should we run it? Um, or do you want to trade up to three, Patriots? Let's 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 run it one more. Because you take Jaden Daniels too, right? The, oh, for sure. Oh, interesting. Oh, Patriots go Marvin oh, Harrison. The Cardinals are not happy about I, this. I, but... I like the way this is going. Okay, okay, let's. We can keep running it. Mm-hmm. Let's keep running it till the next one comes off the board. Okay. Because we Malik got neighbors okay, to good. the Cardinals. Yeah, we we don't need to trade till the next one comes off. Brock Bowers to the Chargers. Cooper is it Dejean pronunciation to the Giants. Roma Dunze to the Titans. Giants aren't doing that. Joe Alt to the Falcons. To protect Kirk, Byron Murphy the second to the Bears, Man. Jerzon Newton. They made it to too the easy Jets. on us. Yeah, this is no fun. You get to they pick either easy. one of these quarterbacks now. This is clearly not going to happen. Man, they are moment they of truth. Did, Thor, this is this is this is bizarre. So since should we, last should we time, start it over. It well, it appears that since last time they knocked down Jaden Daniels like ten spots in their rankings, but then. They're not Look compensating. At, McCarthy has gone up a couple more since last time as well. Look at there's only a six uh, ranking difference now between Jaden Daniels and JJ. The first time we did this, there was like a fifty spot difference between those two guys. Yeah, yeah. That, that's Bo, Bo Nix is at thirty three. Michael Penix at forty eight. Well, I mean, so I'll toss this to you guys. This is not a uh, well. I, I suppose this is just a game theory thing. If, if we're being realistic, we just stick and pick here. But if we're trying to game the system, you trade we tra- back. We trade because we know that we can get one of these guys just because of the way they're ranked with PFF. We know we can get them like late right. teens, early 20s. I think well, we, I think to keep it realistic, I think we stick and pick. Okay. And yeah. in this case, you'd probably take Jaden Daniels or would you take JJ McCarthy? Let's let's take Jaden Daniels then. Um, I also have Jaden Daniels at QB two, um, a little bit ahead of JJ. You know, love JJ, but uh, I have Jaden slightly ahead. So let's take him. Would be a great okay. pick here. So didn't even have to trade. Look what? at that, dudes. And so Denver doesn't take McCarthy. Okay. Denver takes Quinion Mitchell. Yeah. This is hilarious, man. What's so, going on with your buddy at PFF, though? I I don't fall understand. Asleep? I don't understand those rankings. I have like to Rip say, Van but... Winkle. Yeah, JJ McCarthy is still on the board, tumbling. J- JJ is uh, is he- creeping up that board uh, every single week. You know, it's like the first time we did it. Remember, he was in the sixties, and then it was like the fifties, the forties, then the thirties. Now he's what twenty eight. Uh, maybe next week he'll be in the in the teens. We'll see. Yeah, we're almost through the entire first round here. Is there any way this happens where he just falls out of the first round entirely? There he goes, uh, 34 to the Patriots. Oh, uh, that would be I I don't wild, see, I do not see that happening. Would you trade up for anyone here? I wish I had a they don't let you show the big board here while you're in the middle of the draft, but uh should we just stick and pick at 42 and see what happens? Yeah, let's just we'll we'll see what the board is there. Okay. Bo Nix goes 39 to the Giants. So there's another quarterback off oh, the board. Oh, Kool-Aid. 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 Oh, and Chop. Kool-Aid oh, and Chop. Man. Chop should die. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're sitting here at 42. What do you want to do? Embarrassment of riches here. You want to um, trade back? You want to trade back? Look at all these. Yeah, let's let's see who else we got. Okay, yeah. Um, oh, man, Kool-Aid and Chop are both uh, highly, highly intriguing to me I feel here. like we should take one of them. That's yeah. a, stud, a stud corner from Alabama yeah. and a stud edge from Penn State. Man, um... Two teams yeah. offering trades right now. Let's just see. Yeah, let's let's see what we got. So, well, the Broncos want to move up thirty-four spots. The Giants want to move up five. We could move back five, but there's no guarantee that. There's should no we, guarantee should we risk that, it? that one of those two guys is. I'm I'm cool with either of those two guys. You think one of the two is still there in five? Chop might Chop might be. I bet Kool Aid's gone. So okay. Let's, get? Can we get the seventy? Oh, we can't get the seventy. C- can we get uh, one hundred eight? We get the one hundred eight. So you'd be you'd move back five to get the one hundred eight. Maybe maybe one eighty five too. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. You want to see? It. Oh, is, 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 is it gambling, man? Let's see what happens. So they did yeah. accept the trade. All right. 
one one of the two. Give us one of the two. How about this? How about this? Yeah. Let's if if one of them comes off, we can maybe trade back up. Maybe. Okay. Oh, there's Kool Aid. Yeah, oh. Kool Aid's gone. <laughs> okay. Is okay. Kool Aid's gone? gone. Two picks to avoid to fade chop here. Okay. Yeah. All right. Let's cross our fingers. Uh, yeah. We got yes. Him. Let's go. All right. We chop. got chop. Okay. Chop Robinson. Chop. 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 Hey, we just turned around the whole defensive front. We got Christian Wilkins. Now we got Chop. Brian We're Flores coming after oh, people next go, year. Dude. Brian, Brian Flores is just in heaven. Pop the bubbly right now. Oh man, he is in heaven. So we'll go turbo. You tell us. We got like five minutes left with Thor here. So we got six picks left in this five round mock. We got the one hundred eight and the one hundred nine. Oh, so we get back to back picks here, boys. Love it. Okay. I'll show you the big board. Bo Limmer is the number one player on the board, center from Arkansas. This is running back territory, too, by the yeah, way. I was going to say the halfback from Notre Dame. I, oh, I, okay. So, I, okay. I, I'm seeing some names I like. I like Brownlee. I, I really like Trey Benson. And I like Cam Hart, the Notre Dame uh, corner. Who so let's grab a really corner well. for sure, right? You like Hart or do you like Brownlee? I th- let's see. Well, Brownlee's ranked higher in this thing, but I – I think I might like Hart more um, after the way he tested and after the way that he played in Mobile. We, we're going to get dinged on the grade if we do that. Maybe. Oh, 6 2, 207. That's a big corner he, right there. And he tested very well. The, Let's uh, do it. Let's do it. Okay. Cam Hart. Yeah, Cam and then Hart. We're, we're back measured on the clock. in. Uh, yeah, uh, 6 3, 204 with an 8.62 Raz. And he Ooh. was great in Mobile. And I think with the next one, Phil, just go down a little bit more. Just see if uh, Trey Benson, if there's anyone else that we go over Trey Benson. But I'm almost assuredly going to go with Trey Benson here. Okay. Malik Washington, right wide receiver there. I, I but, do like I do like Malik, but I, I'm still going leaning uh, Trey Benson here. Okay, so Trey Benson. Yeah, let's is go. The, let's go, uh, Trey Benson. The Trey halfback Benson, from Florida State here. And, yeah, absolute freak. Uh, he measured in six foot two sixteen, uh, with a RAS of nine point seven seven four point three nine forty. J- just a freak. And uh, in twenty twenty two, he uh, was the first guy in PFF charting history to break over fifty percent of his tackle attempts. So I mean that that kid can play. He's my RB one. Can he catch? Well, he can catch as well. Yeah, okay. he absolutely can. So we've we've snagged a quarterback, an edge, a cornerback, and a running back. We've got four picks left here in our five round mock. We're on the clock at one thirty. Cedric Gray, your oh, linebacker, keeps yeah, popping up. To, might have to take Cedric Gray here. We take him in every single one, but we might have to take. Let's him do in. it. It's right. the, Let's the honorary Cedric. Cedric Gray draft pick here. I love it. Okay, the one forty five. Feel free to shout out any Theo uh, Johnson. Tight Theo end. Johnson tested Penn like State? a freak. Might need a tight end. Do, do you guys I'm think concerned. the Vikes take a, a tight end with uh, Hawkinson on the men? I'm concerned about that. They brought bit. Nick Muse back. He's this dude 6'6", 264, man. Woo-hoo. Tested, tested, absolutely ridiculous. Uh, nine point nine nine Raz, four point five seven forty at six six two fifty nine. All right, let's pop. Let's do Theo. it. Theo? Let's do it. Yeah. Pop, let's pop. 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 I, love, 40, I love less pop. 39 and a half uh, inch vert, 10 5 broad, 7 1 5 3 con. That, that kid's a stud good ass. Good hands? Dude. Yeah, good hands. Football. Okay, you gotta have good yeah, hands. Because I got guys to block. Yeah, yeah, I got Oliver. Yeah. Dude, let's go. Okay, we got two more picks left in our five round. Drake Nugent's here. there again. Back on the clock. He's always there. Yeah, we might have. Yeah. So, what, what positions have we not? Have we gotten an interior lineman yet? We have not grabbed interior offensive lineman okay. yet. We have not. I could go. You want me to pull up the IOLs here, yeah, as they is, call them? Is that the biggest position in need we haven't hit yet? Uh, football. You got to hit the for that. That's okay. right. The IOLs. Football. Interior offensive lineman. Hit that sound here. <laughs> could, so we grabbed a tight end. We could all maybe snag a, if there's a receiver that you like, um, IOL. True. And then, have to replace would you Osborne. toss receivers on there as well? I can do list. I can do one at a time here. Okay. So I'll throw throw receivers on here for you. There's your guy, Luke McCaffrey. Oh, you know it's hard for me to turn down McCaffrey. They always kill me on the grade for McCaffrey, and I don't understand why. We McCaffrey- could wait till the 166 to get him too. He'd still be sitting there. You think? Okay. So here's the full list. 
Who's the highest ranked? Drake Nugent. IOL. Trevor Keegan. A couple Michigan guys. A couple Michigan men. <laughs> Trying to see if there's any other IOLs no here. There's not a lot of IOLs sitting on the board here. Boys. I would have gone. Uh, I would have gone Vidal if I hadn't gone Benson. I'm a big fan of Vidal. But um, let's go with uh, Nugent. And then the next pick, if he's there, of course, we'll go with McCaffrey. So Drake Nugent, the replacement for Garrett Bradbury, perhaps. And then, uh, and then, who'd you say for this last one again? You said McCaffrey. Uh, McCaffrey. Yeah. yeah. McCaffrey. Oh, there he is. There he is. Lines yeah. here. He just went there he there is. He and then Luke McCaffrey will round out this five-round mock. All right, what do we Let's get? see what the grade is. Now, the the grade's at the bottom. We have to scroll down. Yeah. Don't get fooled by the, the top scores. I got fooled last time. They're giving us a B-plus for drafting Jaden Daniels straight up with the 11th overall this pick. This is what the what? hell? This is awful. This, <laughs> this is, is an outrage. We need a the, new... The overall grade is a B-plus. Unbelievable. Simulator. To... We, we need a new one. Daniels, John Robinson, Cam Hart, Trey Benson. I... Yeah. It's unbelievable. Thor's right. This is a bunch of garbage. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> wow. All right, I PFF. Feel like they're, I feel like they're targeting us at this point. How did they drop? I don't understand how Daniels and, and McCarthy both dropped. Like, if Daniels is going to drop, I feel like McCarthy has to go up, right? Dude, we worked this draft. So Jaden Daniels at 11, and then we took a potential first-round edge rusher with the 47th overall pick after trading back five slots and getting two extra Who draft us? picks. And Theo then, Johnson, C+. Plus. Cam Hart and Trey Benson are both absolutely going on day two. All right. Keep I going mean, down, Phil. I'm wild, dude. And I'm, they're both in positions in need. Drake Nugent, they don't like. and we Oh, always. and then they hate your guy, Luke McCaffrey. Luke McCaffrey. They, I love how they, 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 they put the McCaffrey. minus, the C minus. Yeah, like it's for... like, yeah, you suck. <laughs> Hilarious, dude. So, but, hey. And by the way, stuff. McCaffrey, 6'2", 200 pounds, uh, 9.56 Raz, 4'4", 6'40". Mm. Uh, six point seven three cone. Oh, oh. oh, and by the way, his Thor. brother's one of the best Stop. players in the NFL. His dad was a friggin' legacy. I mean, what do you want? <laughs> I mean, what? Conference you, USA, the last people two, are jealous of playing receiver. The developmental curve shooting up. I mean, PFF is jealous. They know that you're getting all this attention it's for, crazy. for your JJ take. They know all he, they're trying to drop your guys on purpose. If they're you can't get way. excited for bloodlines, Jealousy. I can't help you. Football. Yeah. Raz and bloodlines. That's a legacy. I'm going to call Sikkim after this. We, we got to have a talk about some of these. Yeah, you got to have this you rearranged should, by next week or yeah. tell them we're, we're going to find a new simulator. We're done with them. Yeah. That's right. There's other new simulator options. System. Okay. There's yeah. other simulator options out there. No. So, hey, Thor, great stuff. Uh, promote your podcast, by the way, that you guys launched a couple weeks ago for, for our audience to find it. Oh, appreciate it. Yeah, we started the Fantasy Pros NFL Draft Show. Uh, me and my colleague, Derek Brown, we go through the positions, deep dive into mostly the fantasy positions, you know, because fantasy pros. But uh, we're doing running backs next. Going to do a deep dive. Going to do the the top 10 guys, then get deep into the weeds for some of the sleeper guys, and then do the same with the receivers. Uh, last year, we we picked out Puka Nakua early in the process. Uh, Tank Dell, you know, some of these guys uh, before other people obviously got on them, different stuff like that. So check that out on the uh, Fantasy Pros Dynasty feed. Love it, dude. Thor Nystrom, oh, Fantasy awesome. Pros, Betting Pros, our good friend. We'll see you next awesome week stuff. for another Thor's Day. Appreciate you, boys. Always good talking to you. There he is, man. Wow. Just uh, inject all of that into our what, veins What's right PFF there. doing? I'm, I'm not joking. They've like, gone what are rogue, they doing? man. They've gone rogue. <laughs> like, how can you drop two quarterbacks? I understand... <laughs> If Drake May or Daniels drop, okay? Because it yeah. sounds like there's some question marks. So let's say they they the- theoretically uh, drop. How could you have McCarthy dropping to the second round after the combine? Well, let's. We should send a strongly worded email to the editor. Over Thor there. knows yeah, those about, folks. Yeah. Thor, Thor's going to call his boy and say, by next <laughs> week, we need that fixed. Light him up. All right, we have to do a random Viking of the week here to make up for last week's debacle where Judd and I just stared blankly at all of the clues until... David Blau <laughs> came to the surface. Um, so it was a no contest last week. Okay. No contest. Before that, Napoleon Harris, Darren Sharper, Roger Craig, Donovan McNabb, and Darren Nelson were the random Vikings. So Declan has the clues once again. In the new era of random Viking of the week, where all of us compete against each other equally, Judd has 15 wins. I have 12. Declan has eight. All time, Judd 66 wins. Declan 34. I have 19. 
no Googling. We can control F search for okay, previous you know random Vikings if needed. I should call. I should get that list up here because it's so deep. We get three strikes each. If one of us hits three strikes, that person's out. The other person wins. So here we go. All right. Random All right. S somebody wants lunch down here, by the way. Somebody. Oh. I know. I know. I want lunch too. I know. No, actually, I want lunch as well. Yeah. Egg Benedict Burger down there right now. At the cafeteria what? here at Harvard. Yeah, Egg Benedict that's a, Burger. That's adventurous. Yeah. I don't I'm know very about excited. that. It feels a little aggressive. That, that is not doctor friendly right there. That's a lot of cholesterol going right in, into the veins. <laughs> yeah. I know about that one. All right. This random Viking of the week. I this. I, I could, <laughs> man, I'm thrown off by this. It's fluent in Spanish. How about that for a first clue? He's fluent in Spanish per his, per his Wikipedia page. Control F. Hmm. Okay. I might have a guess. Okay. I'm going to wait, though. One more clue. Okay. This random Viking of the week played in three playoff games, all with the Vikings. I'm going to guess. Okay. Is it Fuad Revez? Fuad Revez. Okay. Three playoff games. He was a first team all Mountain West player in college. Hmm. And in a. Tapping. Yep. Yep, not Kevin Tapney. That, then it's don't not go, Kevin Tapney. Don't worry. Not, not Kevin Tapney. <laughs> I won't ding you for a guess is that. Um, Throw back to our grand twin, which I screwed up beyond belief. Yep. He won a league wrestling title in high school. Not a surprise. A lot of football players are very good wrestlers. Three playoff games. This random Viking of the week had 17 touchdowns in his career with the Vikings. 17 touchdowns. I am uh, controlling F just so you guys. Yep. <clears throat> We've done that one, and he didn't have 17 touchdowns. <clears throat> Excuse me. This random Viking. Made seven million dollars in his career with the Vikings. Okay. Seventeen touchdowns. This guy scored touchdowns. Let's see if it's him. Nope. We used him. So he is oh man. This random Viking of the week made just 19 starts in five years with the Vikings. Oh, man. We're <laughs> right in here. We're narrowing it in. 19 starts in five years. Yep. Okay. Where do I want to go next here? Seven million and seven billion in money. <sighs> he really wasn't, in fact, yeah, he really wasn't a full time starter until his last season with the Vikings. Hmm. Okay, seventeen touchdowns. I'm going to pull the opposite clue. Oh, this is the opposite case, I should say, from the Kevin Tappany clue and random twin of the week. Both of you have a lot of tweets about this random Viking of the week. Oh, gosh. A lot of tweets about this guy. 
Hmm. I feel my mind's not working today as well as I'd like it to be. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might need some type of like. It's hard because AG, we've done like you know 150 I, random Vikings. Too, I need so it's... AG1. That's what I need. Clear the clear the mechanism. Hello, brain fog. No, don't do that, please. <laughs> She's just pounded on the door. Man. Yeah, she's mad. She's pissed. Oh, Stella was mad at yeah. Saw something outside she's, before. She's figured out, like, the doorstop springy thing. Oh, yeah. Vinny. Vinny Vinny yeah. loves that oh, they're not dumb. damn thing, too. Yeah, they're, they're not, not dumb. They're we're very, dumb. very smart and manipulative. Yep. yep. We're dumb. <laughs> it's hilarious. They're smart. Oh, oh, we're not smart. You're 100% right. I'm thrown by the, the fluent in Spanish thing. It's like, did, they, did he take a couple classes in high school? We're, we're counting it? or fluent I'll say this. Spanish is a rope a uh, how about I'll, I'll say this? So it's in his Wikipedia page, and it's from a story on Vikings.com. You wouldn't think this guy would be fluent in Spanish. I'll, I'll just say that. Wow. Okay. That's well, you call, just called him dumb. Wow. Or maybe no, you're like, stereotyping. If... Maybe what? you're stereotyping right now. More of the Either latter. way, I don't know, man. Yeah, you wouldn't. Five you wouldn't, years. You wouldn't guess. That's all I'm saying. That's Larry. But I... it's by Larry David. Would, would you guess he's fluent in Spanish? You know, like it's. <laughs> come on. Come on. Years. Uh, in addition to that state championship he won in high okay. school, he also... Damn it. <laughs> Just choking. He also was a decorated track star. Okay, so just... Track and field, by the way. 100 meter, 200 meter, long jump, shot put. Did a little bit of everything. 100 meter? 200 meter. Long jump and shot put. God, I would have been horrible at shot put. Yeah, no, I'd be great. Um, okay, so hold on. This random Viking of the Week is still active. Okay. And currently is unsigned. But he's active. Unsigned and active. I'm just trying to do the math on when he would have played in the playoffs now for the Vikings. Um, so it could have been. It could have been that. Well, okay, been, I'll, I'll, I'll play, take a guess. Last year, last I'll year. take a guess. Yeah, KJ Osborne. KJ Osborne is incorrect. I think KJ Osborne is technically still a member of the Vikings, right? Okay, His free agency hasn't well, started. You're, you're probably right. He's entering I, free agency. And I don't think I'm right on a, a few things there, but I I had to guess somebody. All right. I'm, just, I'm, not, I'm not engaged right now. So I wait, you both. said how many, how many, oh, five, oh, five years, 19 starts in five years with the Vikings. And KJ doesn't start that much. I'm just trying to find a window here where, so 18, 19. Here's, here's what I'm going to do. Because I'm not running out of clues necessarily, but I think this would be fun. <laughs> but you're not saying that you're not running out of clues necessarily. So also, go, I go guess that's name. technically true. <laughs> okay. So you got to be ready on the microphone when I say this. Okay. This random Viking of the week is easily the most recent addition you can make to a random Viking of the week. <laughs> the most recent addition you Alexander can make. Madison? <laughs> Alexander Madison. God. God. Alexander Madison is your so my KJ Osborne. So my KJ Osborne guess was like not as not atrocious. They, like I, I was didn't tracking right. Say, I yeah, I didn't want to say right. you were closing. You're closing in, but but yep. yeah, Alexander Madison cut Congrats. by the Vikings. All right. Congratulations. And <laughs> hey, I I lost out on Tappany, so don't come bitching to me. You're, I have the man's bobblehead right he freaking here, and I, and, I and I got it wrong. Like, oh, and perfect. I got it wrong. My next random Viking of the week. I was like, Judd perfect. picks up his 67th career random Viking victory, 16th that. in the new era. Oh, awesome. God, that's great. So, all right, there it is. Well, I did narrow it down. I was trying to do the math on, like, what window would you be there for five years and play three playoff games? And I did narrow it down to someone very recent who came in 2018. So, I guess there, I was around it, too, but. Nice job, boys. Random Viking of the Week, Alexander Madison. And that's a wrap on Thor's Day here. Feedback Friday, and we'll keep monitoring Kirk Watch. You like that? 2024.